Hello and welcome to Learning Redstone part 4. In this part I want to talk to you about observers, what they do and how they work. I also want to add a little bit about general game mechanics and in the last episode I kinda did not the best job to explain something, I want to roll up that first. So let's get started. So in the last episode I showed you that this will work for both lamps and other setups won't work like this one. The lower part gets not powered and the lamp will not turn on. And when you change things around, this works and this will not. And I didn't really explain why it will not work or will work. So I want to change this now. Um, this part won't work because the um, block here doesn't get strong powered so the redstone dust down here doesn't get a signal and this won't get powered. When we change now the block here to a repeater this block gets strong powered by that it also powers the redstone dust below and this line gets lit up or powered. And the same is true if we place a repeater here and the redstone dust here this block actually gets powered by this redstone dust and the repeater can pick up that signal through the block. I explained that. And that way we also get a signal down here. So I was talking about strong and weak powering, but what even is that? Let's talk about that. To be completely honest with you, I kinda tried to dodge this topic because it is somewhat confusing at even the technical Minecraft players are not all on the same page. But let me try to explain. So I told you when a redstone line faces directly into a block, it gets strong powered. And that means this block gets powered and this one gets activated as well. As you can see, both lamps turn on. This also works with the repeater. Both get activated and a normal power source directly here would also power both. The exception is a redstone block. This is powering weak. That means it only powers the adjacent blocks, not the ones behind that. But why is this now a strange topic or not everyone is on the same page here? That is because redstone dust is an exception. It can strong power as you can see here, but it cannot take out an output out of here by itself. That means if we now place a block here and a redstone dust here, the repeater can strong power the block and the redstone dust can get the signal through that. This is not true if we only use redstone dust. The redstone dust can't pick up the strong powering from the redstone dust. So you could argue that this is not strong powering because the redstone dust can't take pick up the signal but a repeater could. So yeah, this is kinda confusing and I get that this can be strange, but you can just think about it like when you face redstone dust into a block or repeater into a block, this block basically gets just a redstone block. No matter what it was, it will power the adjacent blocks. Exception here, it is a transparent block like we tested in the last episode. So strong powering basically means that you can get a signal through that into another block. And the real exception here basically is redstone dust to redstone dust. I hope that kinda made sense to you. Okay, let's talk about the block of the day, the observer. So first of all, I changed the texture a little bit again with the uh, vanilla tweaks texture pack. So you can see little red icons here that blink up when the observer gets activated, but one step after another. So first of all, the observer basically has two sides. This nice looking face. Yes, observer, I'm also looking at you. And the output on the other side with the red dot. Um, basically, the observer checks if anything changes in front of him, there where he's looking at. This little texture here, this arrow, 
indicate where the signal will go from there. So if we now place a block in front of it, it sees, oh, something changed and gives out a redstone signal to the lamp out of the back here. The signal it produces, it's hard to show, is 15 all the time. No matter what change matters, happens or whatsoever, it's always a signal strength of 15 in the back. And it also is just a single redstone tick. So as you can see, the lamp only flicks for a short amount of time and we get just a very short redstone signal. Okay, so what things can the observer actually detect? It's basically a whole lot of block changes. So what are block changes? For instance, if you switch a lever. It's not powering the observer, he just detects that the lever is now in a different state. So turned up or turned down. And the same is true for buttons. Pushed and he actually does another signal when the button comes out again. This also works for doors, fence gates, node blocks, or you can even push the observer with a piston and he recognizes, oh, I've got switched. So he also puts out a signal. And then there are also different things that we can use it for, like farms. So for instance, when this bamboo now grows, the observer can see that and gives out a redstone signal. This also works for things like um, kelp or sugarcane and lots and lots of other different things. So best case, you should check the wiki for this because there are a whole lot of things that the observer can detect. So the nice part about observers is that you can chain them. The observer behind the one in front of him can see that he got a signal detected and gets it through the whole chain. So when I now open this fence gate, the signal will go the whole row through the observers to the redstone lamp. There as you see. This also works when we now replace every other observer with a node block since the node block gets powered and the observer behind it sees that the node block has a block state change. By that we can reduce the number of needed observers by half. And we can even reduce it further since the observer strong powers. That means if we place a full block behind the first observer, it can get a signal through the first block into the node block and then the next observer can see that. So even a thing like this would work. If you happen to have a keen eye, you might have noticed that this signal takes way longer to reach the lamp than this one. So why is that? The answer is pretty easy. Each of these observers adds a delay, like a repeater does in his normal state. So that is one redstone tick or two game ticks. And what are these ticks I'm always talking about? Well, I try to explain that later in this video, but if you don't really care about that, it's not too much information that you need. But still, I'm gonna show you. I just showed you that the observer can be chained but it also works for corners. So when you let an observer face into the side of an observer, it can also detect this, the change of the block state. So by that, we can do stuff like this. You can transport the signal up or down, sideways, in each direction as you want. You always have to make sure that the corner block is the one checking into the block that is in a straight line. So. It has to face into the side of an observer. By that we can do fun stuff like this. Okay, so about the game ticks. First of all, it is not necessary that you will have to understand this. It is just a general game mechanic that lets you understand how the game works and will help you to make exact measurements how long something will take or just to make exact timings for redstone contraptions. It is not necessarily needed for beginners. However, I will try to explain it in a simple way for you. 
So, first of all, how does the game run? It basically runs in a circle. It does every time a new circle. And it actually does 20 game ticks per second. So in one second, it does 20 circles. And each game tick can have maximum of 50 milliseconds before the next start. That means 50 times 20 gives us a full second. And two game ticks are one redstone tick. But what does all this mean? So this should show you a tick and this is the time between the next tick. And this is generally the loop the game does. Here is the point, it checks some stuff and then there is some time where it checks and then it does a new check. So what happens in a check? So let's look at this. This is where the first tick starts. The first thing the game checks is player updates. What has the player done since the last tick? So did you move? Did you break a block? Something like that. The next thing is weather. Should the weather change? Like day and night cycle or like does it rain? Does, is there a thunderstorm? Stuff like that. And then it checks should mob spawn? Is it dark enough for a mob to spawn? Is it night? And are there too many mobs already? Stuff like that. Then our redstone gets calculated. So the game checks, should there be a signal? Should um, a redstone lamp turn on? Something like that. The next thing is actual lightning strikes and random ticks. So random ticks are basically um, stuff that just happens around the world all the time. Like, should a sapling grow or will fire spread to the next block? Stuff like that. And then there is the part where the villagers, iron golems and stuff like that gets calculated. So basically pathfinding, movement, KI stuff that the game tries to calculate. And lastly there are the tile entities. These are things like chests and hoppers. Should there be items that should be moved or stuff like that. So if the game would run in a scenario like this, it would be fine, cause all the things the game has to calculate added up. So this three green, this two uh, lila and so on would end up into 19 blocks, which is totally fine. So we would end up with 19 MSPT. There is also a thing you might have heard that means milliseconds per tick. So 19 milliseconds is totally fine since we can have 50 and everything over 50 is bad because the game would start to lag. But how do we can reach even over 50? What causes that? So for instance we have a lot of villagers or iron golems. Then this blocks would be more since um, the game takes more time to calculate all the stuff the villagers do or you have big redstone contraptions. The game has to check all the stuff in the redstone happened. So by that you would add more blocks and the line would get longer. The game needs to calculate way more stuff and you could end up with just too much for the game to handle. So in conclusion that means a tick is a certain amount of time the game takes to calculate all the stuff that happens in your game. For us and our redstone contraptions, that more or less only means how long will it take until I press the button until the redstone lamp turns on. Like for more complex contraptions, a little bit more things happen, but basically that's where we can break it down to. With that, I'm going to wrap up this episode of Learning Redstone. I hope you learned a thing or two about the Observer and I also hope I don't like confused you too much with the whole game tick thing. But if you did learn a thing or two, maybe hit the like button and consider subscribing. Until next time, bye bye!